Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. So, today what I would like to talk about is sleep and the importance of a healthy lifestyle on sleep. 95% of sleep issues come from lifestyle habits. Let me say that again, 95%. So if you're looking for a miracle cure, an herb, a supplement, a vitamin, a melatonin, a lemon balm, a lavender pill like Labella by Integrative Therapeutics, like Benesom by Metagenics, like melatonin by Numedica or any form of melatonin, there's delayed release melatonin, um, Calms by Verbita, but Benesom by Metagenics is one of the best ones that has some melatonin um, calming herbs in it. Those things can help temporarily, but your natural melatonin and your natural lifestyle habits are most important for sleep. I can't stress that enough. Lifestyle for sleep, lifestyle for sleep. Now, if you start having sleep that's off in your late 40s or 50s, if you're a female, that is likely hormonal. So you might need more yin in your body because you lose estrogen, you lose sex hormones. So if your thyroid and adrenal glands are not working super great, if your autonomic nervous system is not functioning super well, if you've always been a light sleeper, then when you hit perimenopause or pre, you know, pre-menopause or menopause, you're likely going to have some sleep issues. Um, so you can use synthetic hormones, but I don't think that's really the best option because those can cause other problems. So there are natural based hormonal creams. I really like the company Bezwecken for some of those things. Um, but there's also other ways that you can get hormonal support like wild yam complex from many herb. So what I'm telling you is like, here are some of the remedies that you can use. There's homeopathics like Coffea Cruda. Um, you can try melatonin, you know, that's generally very safe. There's one that's like a delayed release melatonin, which is really useful. But, you know, there's chamomile and other herbs you can use. There's kava kava, there's valerian root. You can ask your doctor about all these things. But at the end of the day, it's usually lifestyle. Nighttime is when your subconscious is most active. So if um, you have a lot of stress in your life or you're overthinking, that can be an issue. I have people make a chart on a piece of paper and it's a square. You put like a uh, cross in the middle, top across, top down and across, and you have four quadrants. And what you do is you put urgent and important, urgent, not important, important, not urgent, and not urgent, not important on the four quadrants. I forget what the name of the square is, but basically what you're doing is if it's urgent, it has to happen today. If it's important, it means you have to do it. If it's not important, you can delegate it to somebody else. If it's not urgent, it doesn't have to happen today. So you can say, what do I need to do today? What do I, what needs to happen today, but someone else can do, I can delegate it and what doesn't have to happen today, but I should do it, and what doesn't have, have to happen today, and I don't need to do it. The box of like not urgent, not important means you can delegate all of it. So sleep, that's really helpful. Um, getting the sunrise and sunset on your eyes, getting sunlight at all on your eyeballs, the more you can be outside, the more it helps your natural sleep cycle and your cortisol melatonin rhythms. But if you can especially get sunrise on your eyeballs, that early morning light, especially if you can like see the sun come up over the higher horizon or see the sun set over the horizon, that's really helpful. Now, cloudy days, winter time, that's not always necessary. In the winter, you can use a 10,000 Lux lamp, L-U-X lamp, in order to help with some of like vitamin D and cortisol rhythms and that sort of thing, preferably used for 10, um, 20 minutes in the morning. Um, you can use it just like shining on you while you're doing other stuff, but lifestyle is really important. Exercise helps a lot with sleep. And one of the most important sleep habits is to have a regular sleep schedule. So if you're like, well, what time, if you ask a patient, like what time do you go to bed? They're like, well, 10, but sometimes it's midnight. And sometimes it's like 2 a.m. if I find a good TikTok video or I find a good Instagram video or Netflix video or whatever else. Um, that guy was like totally not know if he was gonna cross the road. So if you're varying what time you go to bed, that's not so helpful. You might be able to pull that off, but if you have sleep issues already, you wanna to try to make your sleep habits before bed similar. You don't have to be like anal retentive or OCD or anxious about it, but if you take a bath at a certain time, you turn off your phone at a certain time, you dim your lights after sunset, that's all really helpful. The less light, less screen time, super helpful. Like screens an hour before bed don't make a lot of sense. At least a half hour before bed, turn the screens off. Don't use your phone as an alarm. Use an alarm clock. 
That's why they, they're called alarm clocks. Yes, your phone can do everything. It's great, blah, blah, blah. You might need it on if like your kids call and they're out sick, but like put it six feet, arms reach away. Having your phone close to your body within arm reach actually lowers your IQ by five to 10 points. So get it away from you so you're not stupid, literally. But you want your phone away from you. If you can across the room, if best outside of that room and be in like the bathroom or in the hallway, charge it in the hallway outlet and keep your ringer on loud. So if someone does call or calls multiple times, you might wake up. But an alarm clock, especially like a sun alarm clock, Philips used to make one. Um, just you can look up like sun alarm clock that slowly gets bright in the morning, which wakes you up, which helps that like natural rise with a rhythm. But before bed, it's good to know screen time, maybe read a book, read something that's not political or not super exciting, like an adventure or mystery novel where people are dying or, you know, whatever. Um, the bed should basically be used for romantic time and for sleep time, and that's about it. So try not to eat in bed, try not to use your phone in bed, try not to um, do anything like super study in bed, all that stuff. So if you're in like a studio apartment, that might not work, but do the best you can. So that all helps a lot. There's just a lot of like natural sleep hygiene things that are really important. Having a bedroom that's cool is really important. Having a window open if you can is helpful. There's not a lot of like light, um, but if you keep your room really dark, like moonlight could be okay, but anything more than moonlight isn't great. So if you have like a street light outside your window, that's not so great. You wanna generally use like blackout curtains if you need to, but having a really pitch dark bedroom can be extremely helpful actually. Um, and less EMFs is helpful. So another reason to have your cell phone at least on airplane mode if you're gonna have it there. But like I said, if you need to have it on for some emergency purpose, then move it far away from you. But you can turn your Wi-Fi off. Home Depot and like Nards and those places will act, Ace Hardware will make those little like timers you can turn so that your um, Christmas lights go off at a certain time. You can use it for your Wi-Fi router, for your modem, so that the turns off at a certain time so it's not on all night. Um, if you're in an apartment complex, you might be, you'll most likely be getting the Wi-Fi of all your neighbors, but you do what you can. You can check out like EMF blocking devices and that kind of thing. Blue light blocking lenses can help a little bit, but really they're not a substitute because you're still getting a ton of other nervous system stimulation besides just a blue light from your phones. Um, the serotonin and dopamine and all the like reward systems from your phones oh, vastly overrides just like removing blue light. So any type of like screen time before bed is really, really not ideal. So if you have a TV in your bedroom, probably take it out uh, or consider taking it out. Don't watch shows or fall asleep to TV shows before bed. And most people who are watching this are gonna be like, oh geez, I'm not doing what I should be or could be doing. Um, try not to shit on yourself, right? Be like, maybe I want to get rid of the TV in my bedroom. Maybe I want to do this, maybe I could do this. Maybe if I do this, this will be better. Maybe if I do this, my health will be better. Because sleep is probably the most underrated thing. Like people know about exercise, they know about water, but they really, rarely talk about getting enough sleep. So seven and a half hours for most people is important. So seven and a half to nine hours, really important, but know what works for you, know what works for your body. You can use sleep devices to track your sleep for a little bit, but eventually it's not so great. And if you're depressed or tired all the time, investigate your sleep. Um, sometimes like chronic low levels of depression are just like you're not getting enough sleep. You can do sleep studies to look for sleep apnea if you're snoring, if you're waking up in the middle of the night. That could be other issues, sometimes B vitamins or vitamin G, like Cataplex G from Standard Process will help you to fall asleep if you can't fall asleep. But if you're waking up at one to three in the morning, that can also be a liver issue. So like I said, there's complicated ways. Um, diagnosing and treating sleep is one of the trickiest problems in all of medicine. Sleep and skin issues are really tough, but a thorough history will help you with that. But also like your food schedule will help a lot if you're not eating too much right before bed or if you're waking up hungry, that could be a blood sugar dysregulation issue. So there's blood sugar issues, there's vitamin B and G, magnesium, natural calm before bed can help a lot with sleep because a lot of people are magnesium deficient. But taking too much vitamin D can actually deplete you of magnesium and you wanna balance it with K, you wanna balance it with calcium. And it's all very complicated, but if you live a generally healthy lifestyle, um, and eat really cleanly, then you might not have to worry about it as much. But it's all the things that like functional medicine docs will screen you for and help you figure out what's most important for you. But magnesium is also one of those things that can be really helpful to try at bedtime, especially if you have constipation or if you have muscle cramps, that sort of thing. Myocalm Plus by Metagenics is really helpful for restless leg syndrome. So that's the start of sleep. Uh, that works, so I gotta go. But anyways, I love you all. Have a good day. Hopefully that helps you start to think about your sleep a little bit more. Check out Sean Stevenson's book on sleep. Um, it's really good. Anyways, love y'all. Bye.